Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Food Factory for Us International Student Competition. Today we have our third webinar, and with that, I will pass over to Paola Pitia, director of the Food Factory for Us competition game, and she will introduce today's speaker. Paola. Hi, good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, for me to introduce uh, this, uh, this webinar um, that uh, somehow is bridging uh, a series of activities in which the Executive Food Association is involved. First of all, uh, the Food Factory for Us competition for which uh, this uh, webinar has been uh, organized. Uh, and we really hope that uh, the teams and the students that are involved uh, will enjoy it. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> um, I think that there, uh, we have also among our uh, attendees uh, also some uh, participants from Armenia that are, will be using uh, this webinar also as a training. So, uh, as you see, somehow the webinars uh, are, in the case of uh, the Zeki Food Association, an important uh, aspect uh, for, uh, for uh, training for pauses, but also for dissemination. And actually, I'm I'm reaching now the third uh, community or project in which this uh, webinar is um, somehow linked to, uh, which is uh, the activities carried out within a um, core organic project uh, um, on organic foods and uh, on uh, drying. And uh, the team of uh, Roberto Moschetti, led also by Riccardo <coughs> Massantini of the University of La Tuscia, is uh, for sure a leader in this field. So from my side, uh, I thank you very much, uh, Roberto, and um, I give uh, him the floor to start the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Paola Pitia. Um, as you know, I'm Roberto Moschetti, as an assistant professor of the Department for Innovation, uh, Innovation in Biological Agrofood and Forest System of the University of Tuscia here in Italy, in Viterbo. I'm going to start to present uh, my, um, to share my screen. Okay. I think you are able now to see my presentation, I suppose. Yes, that is very nice. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, as you know, the title of my presentation is uh, Use of Computer Vision as a Process Analytical Technology uh, Tool uh, for the Food Drying Sector. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to um, give you uh, some input about what it is uh, process analytical uh, technology. It was first introduced by the Food and Drug Administration for the pharmaceutical industry with the, um, with the objective to improve uh, the quality and the safety of the final product. The PAT is uh, uh, composed by four elements. The understanding of the relevant factor of the, of the uh, uh, process activity, the, anal the analysis of the process itself, and from the analysis of the process, we are able to obtain the data that need to be analyzed uh, using multivariate analysis. And, uh, and then, when we are able to understand the meaning of our data, and the uh, um, model are developed, we are able now to, pro to control the process. The um, process uh, analytical technology in the food industry was defined uh, as silent revolution in industrial quality control in food processing. Um, because um, it allows uh, to switch from a feedback approach, in which we are able only to control the final quality of the product and the end of the process, uh, to a model predictive approach. So using PAT, we are able to develop a predictive model and to directly uh, change a process parameter to control the final quality of the product and then to optimize the process unit itself. 
Using the modeling and the control strategy, we can improve the food safety, the food quality, the we can uh, guarantee the authenticity of product, reduce the cost, and uh, increase the energy efficiency of the process unit. To do this, um, there is the need to uh, use uh, sensors, um, also named analyzer. There are three kinds of analyzer that can be implemented in a process unit, in line, online, and at line. And there are some differences because they require, in some cases, uh, taking samples from the process unit. But in our experimentation, we were interested, in the case of computer vision, in a building camera inside the process unit. So is uh, the use of uh, a computer vision system is uh, an inline approach. Of course, the uh, um, develop of a model requires the acquisition of the data from the sensor and also a process of calibration. So at the beginning of a, a experimentation, in developing a process control, we need also to acquire information from online analysis, also named web chemistry. A path really is really interesting because it allows continuous learning. It means that when we obtain a control system for a process unit, we are also able to acquire data when we are using the process unit. And, and uh, it allow in the future to uh, really improve the um, performance of the model and, uh, and uh, of the control system embedded to the process. So PAT is really connected with the quality by design approach. That is a, a systematic approach, um, which uses a reverse engineering uh, way of study uh, a process. Reverse engineering approach, it means that uh, we need to define what is the one, final quality of the product we want to obtain, so step one. And when we know what we want to obtain, we need to define, define the characteristic of the raw material and also we need to know the impact of the process attributes on the final quality of the product. When we are uh, fine with the step number one, two, and three, we can now develop a control system, step number four, which acquires direct information from the process unit and is able to change a process unit parameter in real time. So uh, I want to just to introduce a little bit what is food drying. Food drying consists in two simultaneous processes, a transfer of energy from a source to a wet solid, in, the, in this case, a food, you know, uh, and uh, a second step that is uh, the transfer of mass as a water vapor. So there is a decrease in uh, size, change in shape of the product, uh, in texture, and also in uh, weight. Uh, why PET has the potential to improve the drying sector? Because uh, the dryers uh, has a low smart automation degree right now. And uh, the food drying is a highly energy intensive operation. So it's affect the product quality and safety and has an adverse effect on the environment because of um, the production of greenhouse gases. In fact, uh, a lot of dryer use uh, fossil fuels right now because uh, it's a uh, process uh, uh, activity that require a lot of energy. And uh, mm, as you know, there is a nexus between energy, food, water. And right now, we add to the nexus uh, also climate changes. In, in the future, we need, to be, uh, we need to be careful because, uh, uh, because of climate change, uh, the surface uh, on our planet uh, uh, in which will be possible the, to live uh, will be reduced. Uh, we need to decrease the amount of energy we are consuming right now 
we need to increase the food variability and we need to control the quality of our water. So uh, improving uh, the food drying is uh, one of the activities we want to do to um, have an impact uh, in a positive way on the, uh, bound, the bound inside the nexus. So the future of the drying technology is um, uh, there is a need uh, to develop uh, smart or intelligent dryers. And to do this, uh, we need to use uh, different uh, input from uh, different scientific sectors, such as uh, computer technology, sector in that uh, st uh, study and develop uh, microcontroller and certain technology, the um, online in-line detection technology, mathematical modeling that is directly related with artificial intelligence uh, and right now the most famous uh, deep learning approach the big data management uh, and the cloud computing um, i add the, also the point three and uh, point four to this slide because uh, really researchers are turning to the application of a smart technology from a laboratory scale uh, research to industrial production. So we already studied what is it smart drying. We need only to transfer to the industrial sector. And the industry right now has become more quality conscious uh, that uh, this technology is available and that they are uh, um, available for the implementation of this te technology in the food sector. Um, as uh, Professor Pitti already told us, uh, the activity I will show you are related with the SUS Organic Project. SUS Organic Project, SUS Org Plus Project. SUS Organic Project is a, a child of the original one, the SUS Organic. During the first project, we obtained the very interesting results in the optimization of the drying uh, process unit. And so there was an idea to try to develop smart and low energy input processing chains. Uh, and um, in the description, are you able to see that um, this is not the, the only one activity we are doing? Um, our activity here in the University of Tusha is also funded by the uh, project of excellence of the Italian Ministry of Public Education, University and Research. The project uh, title is Landscape 4.0 4. and uh, one of the activities of this project is the development of method and technology based on a deep learning approach, so development of uh, in artificial intelligence. Um, thanks to this kind of project right now in our university, we are using an NVIDIA APC cluster, so high performance computing clusters, uh, which uh, allow us to manage a lot of data and to develop uh, artificial intelligence and uh, artificial neural networks. This, uh, in this slide, there is uh, our pilot dryer in which uh, the dryer is the box in the yellow color. And uh, as you can see inside, there are some trays in which we are, um, we, we will, we are putting the, the, the product, okay? On the top of the dryer, there is a hole and the glass to separate the camera from the dryer because inside the dryer, there are uh, a very high temperature and we don't want to damage uh, the, the camera and light sources. Mm -hmm. So there is a uh, hardware and uh, the hardware, the camera is able to generate uh, information. The camera is uh, um, um, uh, used uh, through uh, a package of softwares. In particular, we are using Jupyter. That is a, an agnostic platform uh, which allow us to embed in uh, one line of code more than one program languages. In, in fact, I'm using Python mainly, but also R for the data handling. Uh, this software is directly connected with our NVIDIA GPUs uh, that is used to the modeling of the um, artificial intelligence. Um, 
and then uh, this is possible um, this uh, uh, enable us uh, um, to um, create a model in a very very fast way because of parallel computing in fact uh, uh, we are using uh, a nvidia gpu uh, uh, turing series which uh, is characterized by more than 4000 uh, cores so 4000 uh, unit that works in a parallel way. Okay, what about uh, computer vision? Computer vision deals with allowing computer to understand the digital images and video with him on performing tasks better than human in the, um, in the color measurement, uh, shape and size measurement, uh, object recognition. <clears throat> This kind of technology can be applied uh, to, on a single object to classify a locally, uh, a, a perform a localization of the object uh, in a picture or in a video, or, or to act on uh, multiple objects to perform object detection or object segmentation. But uh, um, to use uh, in the uh, in an optimized way in the computer vision, we need to deal with some problems. Uh, right now, we are working on optimizing the acquisition of picture in our dryer, and we need to uh, face, uh, for example, illumination problem. Uh, in fact, when you are working with computer vision, one of the problem is the, the non-uniform illumination of the image. And the, one of the most uh, famous uh, approach is uh, uh, the use of uh, an homomorphic filter that work uh, um, by taking into account that the image uh, is uh, composed by the original image and uh, a multiplicative effect of a noise. In our case, the noise is the luminance source but uh, the original images is represented by the reflectance of the light on the surface of the product. Performing a logarithmic transformation of the image, uh, we are able to um, remove the uh, illumination, no uniform illumination on the image uh, by applying a high pass filter. So uh, in the bottom right corner of the the slide you are able to see an original, an original image with a uniform light obtained uh, through a microscope and the results in the correct image on the right. Another uh, problem of the application of computer vision is the segmentation. Segmentation means uh, to split the image in several coherent parts. There are two approaches for the image segmentation. A classical segmentation that consists in splitting the image into several parts without any attempt to understand what this part represents. But today, using um, uh, artificial intelligence, we are able to perform semantic segmentation. So to partition the image into semantically meaningful parts. And uh, on the bottom of the slide, there is uh, just an example, because uh, on the right, there is an image of what that was, was computed using uh, seg semantic segmentation. Segmentation is really important if you want to obtain information from your product. So inside the dryer, we are able to measure shape, size, and color changes on the product by isolating it from the background. Uh, and right now we are working also in an, on uh, another problem. As I already told you, between the camera and the product, there is a glass. So right now we are facing uh, the um, uh, typical problem that uh, a photographer faces when want to take uh, a picture from a painting uh, on the other side of a glass. In fact, the results is a superposition of light reflected by painting and the light reflected directly off the glass. To reduce this kind of problem, there are some possibilities. The use of diffuse light sources to manage the parameters of the camera, such as exposure time and the F number, 
making a dark room around the object we want to acquire using polarizers on both light source and the camera and also apply chemometrics. And here, uh, there is an example of the application of uh, independent component analysis. On the left, there is uh, the input, so the superimposed image in which there is the painting and the face of the photographer. And uh, on, the on the right, uh, there is the results of the independent component analysis, so the original painting and the photographer separated in two images. The last uh, problem we are facing is the image recognition. Why? Because we want uh, uh, that our dryer is able to recognize the product and to automatically set temperature, high flow, and relativity, relative humidity. That are the three parameters uh, um, that characterize uh, a drying process. So um, we, we started uh, um, the development of uh, artificial neural network uh, to uh, try to obtain uh, a model able to face all the problem I already showed to you. An artificial neural network is originally inspired by biological intelligence. In our brain, there are uh, biological neurons connected together by using biological synapses. An artificial in intelligence works uh, in, in the same way. The neurons are function with input. The function uh, um, compute the input and uh, perform a weight of the input obtained, uh, generating an output. Each uh, uh, neuron is connected to the other one through synapses. So in the right uh, bottom corner, there is uh, just uh, an example of a simple artificial neural network. Uh, artificial intelligence uh, is a work in progress. In fact, uh, thanks uh, also to the increasing computational power of our computer, in particular of the GPU and TPU, uh, there, is, there was a, a very big improvement in the last few years. And uh, the, the capability of the artificial intelligence was tested uh, in, during the, the past by uh, fighting the artificial intelligence with a with, uh, uh, person. So there was, the, was developed an artificial intelligence in 1995 for, to play checkers, then to play chess, to play Go, to play poker, and all these kind of artificial intelligence uh, won uh, the, the fight against the player. And uh, in January of this year, was developed a very, very powerful uh, uh, artificial intelligence. The name is Google DeepMind, able to win professional gamers uh, in the game StarCraft II. So um, the artificial intelligence uh, is characterized by some different approaches. One of the branch of artificial, artificial intelligence is machine learning. Uh, to develop, with the aim of developing a machine learning uh, model, we need to uh, train the model and then validate it uh, through the prediction test. So the process required the, to acquire data, to extract futures, and to extract the futures, we need the, the domain knowledge of the users, then to develop the algorithm and test it and validate it on a prediction set. The deep learning is much better because uh, through the deep learning, there is no need to extract futures. The artificial intelligence is able to extract futures and to use it. And uh, so it's very, very powerful, but require more computational power. Uh, a kind of uh, deep learning uh, artificial intelligence is the convolution, convolutional neural network. The convolutional neural network uh, is a, a artificial neural network uh, commonly used to recognize uh, images, video, but uh, uh, can also uh, manage uh, 
text to speech conversion and speech to text conversion. It was inspired by the visual cortex in different animals uh, and uh, the, um, the convolutional neural network uh, is characterized by the presence of neurons, also named the convolution neurons or pool, that uh, work uh, with the aim of extracting useful information from the images. The output of convolution layers are used in a common um, artificial neural network to perform the, the task we want. So um, this is just an example of uh, our inference work. We have uh, an untrained neural network that uh, was uh, trained on a task for example, to recognize uh, animals. And the training model, when then tested in the inference step on an external data set. We, uh, during this step, we are able to evaluate the performance of the model and to optimize some neurons if required. In this slide, I, I want to show you the approach we are using during our uh, experimentation. We performed, we, we, we split the test, the, the activity in two steps. The first one is the step that we use to create a semantic segmentation model. And the second step is used to create a classification model. For the semantic segmentation model, we extracted manually features using Python and the Open Computer Vision package to create a mask. A mask is a binary image that represents the raw image. Through the mask, we are able to extract information such as uh, shape and size of the product, and also we are able to isolate the product from the background and then to measure color. A mask and raw image uh, were used to train a convolutional neural network, the UNET network, to create a semantic segmentation model. The approach we used was a transfer learning approach, and I will explain you the meaning of this kind of approach in the next slides. The second step consists in the use of the semantic segmentation model to extract and cut and crop sample from other images. And each sample was used to perform the transfer learning on an image net model with the, with the objective to perform classification on sample. And so to identify the temperature, the, and the air flow, and the relative humidity that the product require at the beginning of the drying process. We used uh, a trick. Transfer, uh, the development of uh, a convolutional neural network is a very, very uh, energy demanding and time consuming process. And thanks to Google, uh, we are now uh, able to perform a transfer learning. That it means to use an already trained model and to change uh, only the few uh, last neurons of the neural network uh, mm, with the aim of performing the task in which we are interested. On the net, there are a lot of computational uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, as you can see, the model size is very big because this number represents the number of neurons of each neural network. So our approach was to uh, train the last layer of the computational uh, convolutional neural network and just to maintain the convolutional layer that are used in a model only to transfer the image and to give the information to the last layers that are involved in the classification or in the semantic segmentation of the model. For our tests, 
we use uh, uh, 18 uh, um, products and we acquire more than 100 images for uh, per class of product in the future we want to increase uh, of course our data set in fact uh, in, in may uh, there will be a meeting of our uh, project activity and during the meeting uh, we want to ask to our partner to contribute uh, in the sites of the data set by giving us uh, the image acquired during the dying process. Our model right now works pretty well. In fact, in fact the accuracy is uh, around the 94% and uh, we have a problem only in the recognition on, of uh, pitch slices. In the um, top um, um, plot, uh, are you able to see the probability associated to the recognition of the different uh, pitch slices? Pitch uh, characterized by a probability higher than 0 0.8 was correctly classified, uh, while a picture characterized by a lower probability to be a part of the pitch class uh, were cor uh, incorrectly character um, uh, recognized. In fact, uh, we obtained uh, two uh, pitch slices uh, recognized as uh, red plants and uh, three pitch uh, slices uh, misclassified as potato. And uh, as you can see, uh, also um, a, a common user uh, is not able to correctly recognize the the picture right now so the our our neural network right now work work very very well but we want to improve it in the futures here i want to show you some other results related with the image segmentation on the left there is the change in size and shape of uh, apple wedges acquired during uh, a drying process Thanks to the segmentation, we were able to measure the change in uh, size of product. So the red line is the, is the relative shrinkage of the product. And um, during the process, we also measured uh, using uh, a balance uh, the change in the moisture content. This kind of information uh, were used to develop uh, a uh, prediction model uh, in fact, right now, we, we can predict the change in the moisture content uh, only uh, measuring the change in uh, the size of the product during the drying process uh, because the model uh, works uh, very, 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 very well. And uh, on the right, uh, you can see the comparison between the real measurement, uh, the blue line, and the predicted moisture content of the product during the process. Of course, there is a higher bias at the end of the product because here we have very, very small changes in the moisture content. So this is pretty, pretty regular. Uh, the segmentation also uh, allow to acquire color information on the left and uh, also to measure the drying rate of the process which is uh, of course related with the moisture content uh, uh, of the product. Okay, um, this is the last um, slide. Thank you for your attention. Uh, there is just a quote from uh, HAL19000. I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can do that. Um, from the movie a Space Odyssey, because uh, uh, Sometimes people uh, are afraid that uh, the artificial intelligence can uh, be so smart to uh, autonomously decide uh, what they can do. Uh, but right now, this is not possible. We can only uh, train uh, the artificial intelligence to perform a specific task. task. So what we watched in the movie is uh, really, really far to be obtained. Thank you for your attention again. I'm hoping... Um, Thank you question. very much. Uh...
Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Uh, really interesting. I'm not an expert in your field, uh, so I found uh, it uh, uh, really of interest. And uh, uh, I would like to leave uh, now the, the floor open uh, to the questions from uh, the attendees before uh, I do my questions as well. Okay. So uh, I remind the attendees that you can raise your hand. Uh, you have a hand icon next to your name, or you can type a question and we can read it to uh, Roberto for you. So the floor is open, let me see. Mm -hmm. okay. I do see a question. Okay, we have a couple of questions. Here is a question from Alistair House who says, if you are interested in looking for a large scale food drying plant, we have three at different sizes and temperature in the UK. They are 650C, 5 megawatt, 180C, 700 kilowatt, and 80C, 350 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, he is offering, I guess, his yes. food drying plants. Yeah. Yes. We, we can we can stay in touch if uh, they are interested yes he resp replies again here that he would be very interested so okay. perhaps um, alistair house and roberto moschetti can be in, in direct contact okay. we have a thank you from marine and termin uh, can't say the name, Hofin Seigen. Thank you very much for interesting information. Thank you to you. And we have Luana Mom. Thank you very much for the presentation. The subject is super interesting and very good to see it applied in food processes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so all of our questions are thank yous and desire to stay in contact. <laughs> I have a question for Roberto because yes. uh, I'm I'm curious uh, to understand uh, the mismatch uh, about the recognition of uh, peaches uh, mm -hmm. with potatoes. I mean, um, I I can imagine that is uh, highly related to the color. Yes, uh, is uh, oh, uh, I related to the color, but. Um, um, is also uh, from shape and size. Uh, inside uh, a neural network, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, neurons, uh, as uh, already explained, uh, and uh, we are not able to right now understand how um, neural networks uh, really works. In fact, uh, all the connections are also named a black box. So um, right now we, there are uh, some emerging techniques uh, that uh, in the future uh, will allow us to better understand the black bo box. box uh, but uh, probably the peaches uh, that were misclassified as, as potato, as in common, uh, also um, mm, uh, some part of the picture that are similar in the shape. Uh, in fact, as you can see, uh, there are not too much differences. Uh, probably also the color was analyzed by the neural network. But to deeply understand uh, why the um, picture were misclassified, uh, we need to um, perform uh, an analysis of the layers of the neural network. But I, um, I want also to add some, uh, an, another information. Uh, the neural network we, we, we computed uh, need to be need, need, need a fine tuning. A fine tuning is a process in which the last neurons will be uh, additionally corrected to reduce the misclassification problem. I had a question about the same misclassification because I saw the I felt more logical that the peaches were misclassified as plums, 
because there mm -hmm. is also a similar texture. For the potatoes, yes. I was surprised because I thought the texture is so different. The heart, you know, of the potato with the yes. compared yes. to the water content in the peach, I thought, why is the water content not allowing the classification? I noted that uh, misclassified peaches uh, uh, as a similar shape to the to the potato. I think that this is probably the 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 problem. But I need to investigate more. Um, and uh, in the future, we want to add uh, other samples, uh, and uh, for sure, it will uh, improve the robustness uh, of the model. I have a, I have a, a, a challenge for Roberto. Obviously, uh, you mentioned here that you are uh, implementing a lot and developing a lot of uh, uh, activities under this project. Uh, we count uh, on you in one year uh, uh, ahead to yeah. deliver another webinar on the results uh, of your uh, studies. Uh, and we will be very happy to to watch and uh, to see your uh, next steps in this uh, development. Okay, uh, it will be a pleasure uh, for me. Thank you. And um, next time uh, I will show you how Jupiter uh, will work in real time. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you very much. So, Catherine, Thanks. if there are no other questions, please have a look. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't see any other questions. So, okay, so we can, uh, yes, we can close uh, the, the webinar. Thank you very much, Roberto. Catherine? Remind yeah. everyone that this webinar is recorded and it will be available on the Iseki Food YouTube channel. Okay, so thank you very much. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.